A very warm welcome to you and lesson one is about defining what confidence is all about. And once we can clearly define what confidence is all about, it's much easier to overcome your fear or anxiety if you could absolutely pinpoint what is triggering that anxiety as you meet people or as you do a presentation and what have you. What are the possible applications for this? People that are afraid to turn on their camera during virtual meetings because they have this apprehension and that all leads to lack of confidence. Uh, they are afraid to meet new people because they are they're fearful of the unknown, nervous about giving a public speech or just a speech, no confidence even to introduce themselves or uh, to complete a task. Uh, they're terrified about mingling with uh, people, uh, all powerful people, and they fear, uh, they fear approaching strangers and making new contacts. They are constantly in fear and suspicion. Uh, their fear of taking risks and making decisions. If one of these reasons describe you, then you're in the right place. And we are going to jump right into this. So one of the main reasons for you having the lack of confidence is the fear of being judged. Think about it, a fear of being judged. So you see, sometimes you think that, oh, I'm, I'm afraid of being on stage. And by the way, there's a saying, the most fearful thing people have, the fear of doing public speaking. I think that's a bit dated right now because with social media, Facebook, TikTok, everybody wants to be in front of the camera th these days. But nevertheless, let me address the elephant in the room. People are afraid of public speaking, not because of the stage. So listen to this. A teacher can be very comfortable with her students because her abilities are far superior than the students. She knows that she can handle the class. She knows she's more mature or he's more mature and older. And whatever the children ask her, she's able to answer. But if the teacher is asked to speak in front of a group of principals, then the teacher becomes uh, very nervous because a single principal would have more experience and perhaps more wisdom than the teacher. But collectively, if there are 100 principals in the room, that totally amplifies her fear or his fear. That is the reason why that person that's doing the public speaking is being fearful. So it is not the stage or not the people, but rather who are the people that are listening. You're fearful when you're doing a presentation or public speaking because you're afraid of being judged. And the reason why you may feel that way is because you have a history of going up on stage and then when you came down, you had a bad review or negative feedback. And that really hurt you and it traumatized you to an extent that is so deeply embedded in your subconscious mind, you say, I never want to do it again. It could be consciously or it could be subconsciously. So remember, towards the end of this course, I will help you unwind and unscramble uh, that history. So you carry a uh, history of negative memories and you keep replaying them in your mind like a broken record or a video that keeps going. And you know, instead of thinking of happy things and positive things, this particular incident keeps you playing in your mind and that's how it eats into you, okay? So you replaying some negative memories causes you to perpetuate this negative feeling. What is it? It's a feeling. It's a feeling and the feelings are like fear, anxiety, apprehension, all those feelings, okay? So this fear of negative feeling or the memory of a hostile response. Somebody came to you and said, you're a waste of time. You know that speech of me? You're a waste of time. You wasted my life. And it hurts you so badly and uh, it causes a huge impact, okay? It ripped you on that day and the memory was embedded very, very deeply. Third thing, you never tried and uh, you never tried public speaking, but you, you heard from someone, it's terrifying. Why? Because you read from somewhere, from some social media or some 
fascinating motivational quote, the greatest fear a human being have is the fear of public speaking. I don't even know where that came from, okay? So I really don't think that is true. There are people that are afraid of public speaking, but I don't think that's the greatest fear. Personally, I fear the dentist more. Okay, so you've never tried it, and uh, perhaps we're just not talking about public speaking, but we're talking about meeting people, meeting strangers, meeting more powerful people. So you keep looking at yourself and say, uh, I'm, I'm poorer than them, I have uh, less EQ than them, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to respond when someone talks to me. So I had a friend who had to meet with a very, that word I could use, financially very comfortable person. It was used in uh, Crazy Rich Asian. And he felt so intimidated that he cancelled an opportunity, a business opportunity to meet a tycoon. When the tycoon is powerful and could open many doors, he just didn't want to go through the anxiety and the trauma of meeting a very powerful person. Okay, so that's what we're going to address today. And the fear of not knowing how to respond. You're in an awkward or even confrontational situation where the person asks you questions and, and you don't even know what the question is about. Okay, so you're fearful. Uh, that sometimes happens during a live television interview and uh, I don't understand the slang or the diction or, or I don't even understand the question. Okay, so we'll teach you how to get out of all these troubled spots. So why confidence is a quality? You see this saying, we place value over skill sets rather than confidence of a person as if confidence is a good to have rather than a must have. We're talking about uh, HR and people who are hiring that very often we hire a person based on his competency. And I'm not saying that's not important. Of course, the competency is important, but I, I feel that other uh, traits are important. Number one is the attitude and the character of the person. Higher based on the character of the person, okay? So a person that's not going to be troublesome and a troublemaker in the organization. And number two, of course, if you have a confident person for a role that requires a high level of confidence, it's much better, okay? Because it's going to be quite tough to build up the confidence, but perhaps this workshop might just help. So we, without confidence, we actually get stuck. We want to, to achieve more. We want to have, we have big aspirations. And very often, we can't achieve what the other guy is achieving. He's faster. He's um, more productive. Why? Because there are stumbling blocks. And, you know, people always say it's the mindset, mindset thing. But yeah, let's break it down. And one of the big components is confidence. Okay, so we get stuck. We cannot move forward. And we are immobilized. So here are more reasons why you might be not confident. And while we're not teaching yet in lesson one, if you are aware of where your weakness lies, you may just want to write it down. So as the lessons progress, you say, yeah, I'm aiming to um, solve these areas. Okay. So you have self-doubt. What is this self-doubt? You know, this thing we're going to talk in lesson two is called personal value. How much do you value yourself? And that's about it. Because very often you undervalue yourself and that is not what people think of you, but you think about you about yourself. You value that about yourself. Okay. So some people say I, I'm useless, I'm useless, I'm valueless, maybe I should just take up take my own life. And your mother comes and says, you mean the world to me. You mean so much to me that I'm willing to take the bullet for you. Think about that. So your mother values your life more than her own life. And that's why parents are willing to jump in front of a bullet and take the bullet for the child. Because they value your life more than their own. Okay? So that is the self-doubt part we want to address too. Now, focusing on what you can't do rather than what you can. So these are what we call the negative people. Instead of looking up on their strengths, they constantly look at their weaknesses. Every time you meet someone, they will compare, oh, uh, I'm not as pretty as her, or I'm not as rich as him, etc. Okay, so you're constantly going into the negative zone. Be aware of this. It is no one's fault but you because you value less about yourself than you should. You view yourself negatively, 
pessimistically and harshly. We call that beating yourself up. It doesn't help. It just doesn't help. And as I'm speaking now, and if you're aware of this, you got to tell yourself, hey, I, I need to stop. And the way this workshop is going to be useful for you is you are willing to be open and try new things and achieve that shift in your mindset and in your position. Okay, you need to shift your position and say, okay, I'm very inclined to keep beating myself up and treating myself harshly, but that's it. Yesterday was the last day I'm going to do that. And as the workshop progress, you can take a new position and a new step. Okay, you are no longer going to devalue yourself and uh, the fear of making wrong decisions. Um, this workshop is not about giving you the ability to make right decisions, but it's a, the fear of not making a decision because you have a fear of making a wrong decision. Do you follow that? Okay, it's not about teaching you how to make right decisions, but the, teaching you not to have the inability to make any decisions. And it just comes down to being immobilized. Don't put yourself within people who might put you down. Because if you're constantly surrounded by friends who are not lifting you up, but putting you down, everything you present to them, they have a cynical, skeptical, and even an insulting response to that. Not just friends, could be siblings, your brother, your sister, could be a nasty uncle, or sometimes even your own parents. Quite often, when we talk to people with issues, they said, my parents never gave me any affirmation. And you know what? They spent their entire life trying to get that elusive affirmation from their parents. They spent their whole life trying to prove to their parents that I'm worthy. And embedded very deep in their subconscious mind is, I am not worthy because my dad or my mom never gave me that affirmation. So something for you to ponder about as we close lesson one. And if you're ready, let's go to lesson two.